um, Cape Town and also an administrative arm in, in the UK. So Founders Factory Africa debuted about 2018 and then from then till now, we've backed about 54 startups and that's investing in scale businesses and also in early stage businesses. Um, so I've been at Founders Factory for just more, about over one year now and it's been an interesting journey working with early stage businesses, collaborating with founders, being plugged into the tech ecosystem, and definitely seeing how this tech ecosystem has just blown and it's over time something to look up to and be like, this can be a new nation. So excited about the panel and definitely happy to be here with the, with the ladies. Thank you. Thanks, Ayo. Um, we'll be going over to Lexi now. Hey everybody, my name is Lexi Nowitzki. Um, so, as you can probably tell, I didn't grow up in Nigeria. Um, but I moved here about 11 years ago and started investing in really the first wave of tech companies to come out of Africa and Nigeria specifically. So we were some of the first investors in Paystack, in Flutterwave, M Pharma, kind of these first companies that have now become success stories on the continent. Um, through our second fund, we continued to back another about 30 investments. But what we were seeing was a big gap when those companies, from their seed stage, they needed to really raise the big amounts of capital to help them scale up and grow across the continent. There wasn't a lot of local capital on the ground. So all of these companies were raising from international investors who had become quite um, interested and excited in the Africa growth story but those investors really could only bring their money and they didn't really have that second piece that was important and that's really knowing what's happening on the ground and helping those companies with what they need on a day-to-day -day basis. So engaging with the regulators, finding the best talent, expanding from Nigeria to the rest of the markets in Africa. So we launched Norskin 22, which is a $200 million growth stage investment fund. Um, we're three partners, uh, myself based in Lagos, there's another partner in Nairobi, and a third in South Africa. And we're investing from the Series A all the way up to the Series C. Um, and very excited if some of you are, are growing into that, that point where you're really ready to scale up your company and we can come in with a $5 million check, that's usually where we like to participate. Thank you so much, Lexi. Um, we'll go on to Oina, please go ahead. Okay, good afternoon. Um, I also didn't grow up here, as you can tell from my accent, but I am Nigerian. Um, I'm Oi, Oi Nkosala um, Shalebo. I am the managing director of Techstars, and at Techstars, we help startups succeed. So we've been investing in startups for years. We've invested in over 3,000 startups with now a cumulative market cap of about $72 billion. Um, and we've been doing this globally, and last year, we finally launched in Africa, in Lagos. Thank you. <laughs> that is something to be excited about, right? Sorry? I said that is something to be excited about. Absolutely, yes. Right. Yes, amidst everything else. So yeah, we've invested in 12 awesome startups, including Cybrief. <laughs> um, so our investment thesis is FinTech or FinTech adjacent and PropTech. So essentially investing in pre-seed companies. So companies that haven't yet raised a significant round, ha have an idea, probably have some kind of market, market, market validation, um, and join the program to really get capital, knowledge, and a network to help them grow. Thank you so much, Oi. Um, now we'll go to Kelechi. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Kelechi Achinono. Regional Head for Heal West Africa. Now, Heal is, an, we do a lot of things, but for context, Heal is an accelerator that supports, finds and supports justice startups. Now, this is the best opportunity for me to clear the air. When we hear justice, I know that people think about law, but what we are doing at Heal is, law is good, but we realize that there are other aspects of justice that affect the everyday man, and we look for and support startups that are solving problems around that. So for instance, take 
money problems, take fraud, take theft, take crime, identity issues, take land, neighbor, employment issues. We support startups that are solving problems around that. And we've been in Nigeria since 2015. So far, we've supported over 100 startups across our different programs. So acceleration, our hackathon trying to inspire ideas, and as well as the incubation programs as well. So please, when you hear heal and justice, justice is not just law. Justice affects every part of our lives. Thank you. Um, thank you, Kelechi. And since, since you introduced yourself last, my first question um, would go to you. I know that heal is specific, right? So um, you have a thesis around justice, around legal. How is that different from every other accelerator out there? Why is or how, how is Hill unique in that sort of way? Okay, thank you. So because we are more, I would say we are more niche specific. Now, literally, um, I'll use an example of um, an accelerator can, can support a, a fintech, for instance. But from our end, we're looking for the fact that your solution is not just um, it's not just facilitating payments, but it's also helping out to solve a problem in the sense that is it helping the underbanked digital inclusion? What exactly is it doing? So it's great that you are sustainable, but what's exactly the impact? What exactly are you doing? Now, I don't know of a lot of accelerators that would, that would support startups that are solving employment problems or tenancy issues or land issues. Um, PropTech is a really good example, but I think for us, we're also looking at land issues is a serious matter in Nigeria, for instance, where someone dies without a will and then they're always fighting. So what if we have a system where land ownership is automated or is stored or something like that? Now, someone having that kind of solution, we will gladly support you because, I mean, in Nigeria, for instance, with, uh, we did a data survey, a justice survey in 2018 and realized that the ranking of legal issues in Nigeria, you know, crime, neighbor, neighbor issues, employment, money. We want to be able to inspire such ideas. Also coming to my first introduction where justice is equated to law. In Nigeria, when you hear law, you hear free service, pro bono. And one issue that we have seen, the kind of startups we support have a challenge with is sustainability. Because how do you want to tell someone that they are living below they are mint, right? They know what they can afford, and yet you want them to pay for a service. Um, but yet, you have to find a way to be sustainable. So I think that um, one unique thing about us is being able to find those kind of startups and inspire, motivate, support them in whatever way. Interestingly, it's a grant funding. So we're not looking to say, we give you money and we're looking for um, returns. returns on it. No, it's like we're trying, and that's why we're trying to just support and inspire in any way. We, we now have a, a scaling program. We have a fund okay. where we get to now invest in you and then yes, there's like some returns um, expected. But for the accelerator, it's like, yeah, let's just support you in that sense. Absolutely. So would you say Heal supports um, startups with social impact? Um, would, I, would you say that is the core? Rather yes. than like more? I would say, yes, social, but then I'll use the word justice instead. Yes, okay. because that's like, the key word that we really focus on. And then that, if I say social, it feels like sometimes it sounds like we're looking for NGOs. Okay. That's something that we've actually really dealt with, but then it's just, right. as long as you're solving a problem that is impact focused, right, and then you can be sustainable, then yes, we will, I would like to talk to you. Absolutely, thank you so much. Um, Oin, could you tell us a bit more about Techstars, about the programming, about what you expect, or what founders would expect from the Techstars program? Could you just share a bit of light on that? Yeah. Sure. So um, the Techstars Accelerator provides three main things, capital, program, and community. So on the capital side, we invest up to $120,000 in each startup um, via an equity investment upon your first significant fundraise and a convertible note. So we, we invest $120,000 to help you invest in your business. The second thing is the program. So we develop and provide a 13-week curated program, which Eunice can tell you more about, um, which is really good to providing you with knowledge, insights, network that can help accelerate your business over a short period of time. It starts with two weeks of what we call mental magic. So over those two weeks, 
you meet almost 100 mentors, you're essentially speed dating them. And that just gives you amazing insights across different industries, across different functions. You're testing your business model with them. They're giving you instant feedback. And off the back of it, you're gaining at least five mentors who you will take through the rest of the program. And it culminates in Demo Day, which is really the startup's opportunity to present everything they've done and achieved to the tech ecosystem and to investors. Um, and then there's the network beyond it. So Techstars has a community of over 7,000 mentors, 7,000 previous founders, and also 22,000 investors. So the, tech, the founders also gain that global community for life. But I think really the main thing that they get is they get each other. They get the opportunity to work with 12, no, 11 other companies for the uh, duration of 13 weeks. And those relationships they're going to have for life, they're going to be the most probably meaningful relationships that they have um, as they grow and go through the struggles and the celebrations of, of being a startup founder. Thank you so much, um, Oyin. I'll quickly come over to Ayo. Ayo, you had mentioned that Founders Factory is a South African brand or company. Um, could you share light on to when you started in Nigeria, how that experience has been, um, what is this, the plan to expand your footprint in Western Africa? Right, um, so for, for us, right, we, we do think about the fact that African is connected um, and then this Pan-African mindset comes in play. So we could choose to launch anywhere, but then we see Africa as a a more a connected space. So we always think about it that even though the founders or the CCUs of our business choose South Africa to be the launch, it's a lot more of how do we think of Africa from the product, from the people, from the community, from the intricacies of the market. So we, we always think through, okay, though, it's, though, though the launch in South Africa, we have, um, a, we have a team in Nigeria, the first person um, we've had people work out of Nigeria for some time, okay. but, but now we are kind of stepping, stepping up and then being more visible, okay. being more connected to, to the founders in person. And that's coming from the fact that Nigeria cannot be downplayed in any aspect. Even if South Africa over time has proved to be a big market to like Nigeria, Nigeria has a population, right. Nigeria has the interconnection, Nigeria is basically like it has a big giant step on Africa. So for us is we, we've been here for, for, for as long as 2018 when we launched. Okay. We've had founders work out of Nigeria across a different portfolio. And then when we started, we started with three major space, FinTech, AgTech, and Neotech. But we also know the market has transit, transit that kind of like close strategy to a lot more of um, working with almost all kind of founders across all space. What makes us dynamic, right, is that we thought about it from a corporate perspective. So while every fund or major funds you see in Africa raise money from individual family offices, we raise money from corporates. So we raise money from Standard Bank, we raise money from Neckey and Small Foundation, and we, 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 we raise it with the mindset of corporates can actually work with startups. A lot of time, they need someone to be like the middle player to say, don't come at these guys this way, they don't work this way, and then come at the startups and be like, you guys need traction because the fundamentals is what makes businesses work in Africa. So we, 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 we became that kind of like midpoint to connect the, the, the two players. And we've seen that transit because we've seen businesses across Africa about, um, we have portfolio in about seven countries, we have team members in about six, and we are, we are rapidly growing to, to definitely like scale up. So um, for us, it's a lot more of an African approach and it's not like when I were in Nigeria. Uh, today, I met, um, only of Texas, where we share the same building. So it's a lot more. We now even have an office in Lagos. And then we have about six people working out of that office in Lagos. So please, we are excited to talk to founders <laughs> right from Nigeria anytime. So we are definitely boots on ground. Absolutely. I'm excited about that. And it's good to know that Founders Africa has put on in Nigeria and they're around and happy to engage. One thing you'd said that you work with corporate partners, and I, I wanted to speak to Oyi about that since um, Techstars currently in Lagos is also working with a corporate partner. How is that going? How is, do you think there's a lot of um, value add that having a corporate partner brings to um, the accelerator program? 
So for the program, we've, we've partnered with ARM, specifically ARM Labs. So they are an innovation program and they came out of ARM, which is Nigeria's largest non-banking financial institution. Um, so with them comes a global network, sorry, a, an, an African network in um, financial services, specifically in pensions, investment management, real estate. Um, and they also come with a network and experts. So for Techstars coming into Africa on ground for the first year, it made sense to work with someone who had local market knowledge and local connections, et cetera, to, um, in addition to my own. Um, but I think the, there's a lot of potential on working with corporate, found, uh, corporate partners because the idea is they're not only bringing capital, they're not only bringing people, but they're also bringing opportunities for the companies to find commercial relationships. It's still very much on the company, the startup, to identify where that opportunity is and almost sell that proposition to the corporate. It's not going to come easy. It doesn't mean that just because you're part of the accelerator, you're going to get a deal with the corporate, but it means that there's a door open there. There's a door open to a senior person for you to have that conversation. And if you're prepared and you've thought about it wisely, there's an opportunity to make a commercial partnership. Absolutely. Thank you. And Lexi, my next question goes to you. So. Um, I want to, you to share with the audience about accelerators in general, what you think about them. I know that, I mean, your fund typically invests in later stage um, startups, right? So what role would you think accelerators play um, in early stage startups, right? And also in your experience, would you say, I mean, they prepare um, startups for funding at a later stage, right? In your experience, would you say, Startups who have gone through accelerators are more prepared to receive funding probably at the later stage. What has your experience been like? Yeah, so I mean, the, a, a fantastic operator, you can have the biggest problem in the world and be a fantastic operator and unlocking it, but if you don't know how to set up your governance systems and if you don't know how to communicate that to an investor and look for what they want to see and need to hear, then I think you're, you know, you still won't attract the money. You really need to scale that business up. So I think that that's the first thing that accelerators do that is in, in, incredibly important and, and necessary. Um, selfishly, I think what they also do for us is they act as a fantastic filter, right? Like, so they are able to choose, they see hundreds and hundreds of applications. They choose the, the best ones. They then leverage on their expertise to help those companies grow and really recognize the right product market fit for their company. And then that almost comes as like our funnel. We, we know that those are companies that we want to watch. We, you know, we sit in on demo days, we look and we see which ones are, are quite interesting, even if we're not yet ready to invest, right? And, and I think that visibility is hugely important. I also think that um, maybe just for, the panelists here, I mean, for so many years, the, the key incubators to get into were, glo were global and they were based overseas, right? So a founder would have to take time away from their customer, take time away from the market where they were building a business and t do programs overseas. And for, on one side, you know, that gives you some exposure to international capital, but I think having in, in incubators that are based here locally where the founders can sit in a local office have mentors that understand the local problems to help them really attack them is also incredibly important for those companies. Right, thank you so much. Oni, my next question is to you. So you had mentioned that, I mean, FinTech, PropTech companies, right? And I mean, there's a debate on the continent that there, there are already a lot of FinTechs in, in, on the continent, right? Would you say Texas also invests in um, companies that are not just fintechs or prop techs, right? So what would you say to founders who are not building in those niche areas? Um, well, I think side brief is testimony to the <laughs> fact that <laughs> right, <laughs> that yeah. there is a little wiggle for, yeah. yeah. Um, so our original investment thesis okay. was fintech and prop tech, and right. that very much aligned with the expertise of ARM, given that they are a financial services company and they also offer real estate investments as one of their, one of their asset classes. Um, but yes, we have a, a legal or yeah. compliance <laughs> or reg tech, yeah. 
regtech company. We've got a company that is um, health tech as well as fintech. Yeah. Uh, we've got a couple of companies that aren't necessarily fintech. They're more around data aggregation. Um, we've got one insure tech company. So there is, there is a little bit of wiggle. So I would say to a company that is wondering whether or not they should apply, give it a go. Um, but if you are turned down because it doesn't quite match, please understand. Right. Thank you so much. Ayo, my next question would go to you. So, like, when founders are applying to Founders Africa or accelerators in general, what are um, key things you would typically look out for in all of these founders who are pitching to your accelerator on a daily basis? Right. Um, thank you for the question. So, just a little bit of clarification. Uh -huh. It's Founders Factory founders Africa. Africa right. So, I mean, because you have got to be specific on the brand. Um, so for us, right, when we are looking um, at businesses, the first thing we are looking at um, is you are looking at first the founder. That's the, th that's like the person holding the vision of the business. And a lot of times when we look at founders, we look at founders from pedigree, we look at founders from the excitement and attraction to the problem, we look at founders from the point of their ability and also the temperament to work with more people across different classes, which is work with people on their wavelength, work with people below their wavelength, and work with people that are kind of just ahead and they are trying to bring them to their wavelength. And then why I say this is because at the early stage of businesses, the founders are the custodian of what the business would look like because they call the shots. But for us, what makes us dynamic is we run two models. We run what we call a build model where Founders Factory writes ideations and then we float it by our corporate partners who approve it and give us a budget and then we hire entrepreneurs to co build that. So what that means is for the first, for the first um, about six to eight months, the founders are paid comfortably. So it's a lot of like a, a little bit of taking it easy before they go face probably what we call the trenches here. Yeah. Um, but but what, what that gives us first is like, it gives us an approach and we also invest in scale businesses, which are founders over time, have the product, have the traction, they really just want to topple and they just want people to give them capital and let them move. But we know that there is a point where you need to work with these people to still refine and then smoothing some of these edges. So what we are looking for is great market, but first is the people, great people. I mean, we should be comfortable to work with the people. They should be able to take feedback, give us feedback. They should also be very flexible. And something we don't take for granted is compliance. People should know the big picture that is way more than they are having the ideas. If this business is grows and explodes, it's going to have a life of its own. How you choose to nurture the business at the early stage just shows how dynamic this business can become. So those are the things we look out for. First, we, it, 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 it starts with the person, then it rolls over to the business. And then uh, for us, the dynamic is we, we invest across some places that it's been seen like a slow but picking up you know, sector. We do health tech, we do agri tech. It's not, it's not the most comfortable, but it's somewhere we believe our thesis and also the experience of our team can help us work with founders to accelerate. And like I said, we have about 54 portfolio companies, which means we work with different kind of people, but we find a middle point for scale. Thank you so much, Ayo. So I hear Ayo when he says that um, the team is important. So the team or the set of founders who are solving these problems must be capable of solving these problems. I also hear you when you talk about market size and the opportunity must be big, right? So, Kelechi, what are the other things that, I mean, you would typically look out for um, before deciding to equity invest in a, in a founder? Okay, so I would say in addition to everything he said, um, and speaking from my own experience with what we do, how interesting we are, the kind of startups we look out for, I think one thing is that um, from the founder side is also the commitment, which is one challenge I've had, and I don't know if accelerators have had that as well, where there's always this excitement to the applications, and then they come in, it's like the first two, three weeks, then afterwards, I'm not begging them. <laughs> 
So please come around. I think that's like, that has been a challenge. I think that's something that we look out for. So it's like, whenever we're having conversations, I really want to know that you actually are passionate about this problem and you would try your very best to explore all options to solve whatever problem you're trying to solve for your user, right? That's like, that's a key thing. And I think that also, aside commitment, I think it's also the fact that thinking from our own perspective as an accelerator, I report to someone, right? I have to give reports that the money that you gave me, I've given it to this person, this are like, this is the result. But I think um, still coming back to the applications or what we look out for is like when they give us, when startups give us um, an insight into what they think they want to do for the time they are with us. And I'm asking you what's going on, how's it going? It feels like I'm, I'm now a burden, right? Because we had an agreement. <laughs> I, it's like supposed to be a win-win. So I think, that's, I think that's something that has been, in my own experience, a thing that I'm now very particular about. So it will be interesting to know that this particular startup actually wants to solve the problem. And seeing how interesting our space is, is the fact that um, sustainability can be a challenge. Um, trying to get user acquisition can be a, acquisition can be a challenge. Being able to go the extra mile will be very interesting. And being innovative as well. So with us, I think that with us, and this is no shade to fintechs, <laughs> there's been a thing where certain people are trying, to re, are trying to do the same thing again and again, and they will just call it a different name. But with our space, if you are solving the problem, we will know. It will be very obvious. You cannot fake innovation in that sense. So I think that um, having an innovative solution is something that we also look out for. So commitment, your solution is actually innovative. And interestingly, I don't think um, for us the case of you coming with this solution, which is one thing about accelerators, um, we're not trying to, we, we are with you every step of the way. So even if you come into the Hill Accelerator, for instance, and then we both realize based off constant coaching, mentorship, conversation that maybe this is not the way to go. Maybe we should pivot. We would we'll not say, oh, you want to pivot, collect our money back. No. <laughs> we will continue to be with you until you eventually hit the mark or the milestones you, that you have set. So I think that's like something I can add to everything that he's mentioned so far. Thank you. Thanks. Um, thanks so much. Um, Oye, is there anything else Techstars in particular looks out for? When I mean, a lot of people apply, apply to Techstars, right? And only a select few get in. So are there any additional criteria? Is there anything else you look out for? Yeah, so, I mean, we, we summarize it as four things, but, and three of them, I think, have been touched upon. So team, okay. market, product. Um, on the team, I would just add that the other thing that we look for is actually an openness to learn okay. and coming with a learning mindset because... As a founder, absolutely, no one knows your business better than you, right. but that doesn't mean that you can't gain super valuable insights by actually being open and vulnerable and sharing what's going on with a trusted advisor, mentors, etc. So, yeah, being able to see that those individuals have a learning mindset is super important. Um, and also seeing that... You're gonna oh, I was going to add something to that, but please okay. continue. Um, and also... A give, so we have a principle called give first at Techstars, and it's the idea that you give without the expectation of return. And I love seeing that in all of our founders because, as I said, one of the biggest things they're getting from the program is being in the space with, in our case, 29 other people who are at the same stage as them. And we rely on them to be sharing their insights with each other and learning from each other. So, yes, yeah, so I would add that to team. Um, but the fourth area that hasn't been spoken about is traction. Okay. Um, and I think this is super important because for a lot of startups and a lot of founders, a lot of founders in Nigeria are technical. So they rush straight to making awesome product and technology, but they have not proven that anyone will actually pay for. Please don't do that. Waste of time, waste of money. I would rather see startups come and say, I don't have a product, I don't have technology, I've got an Excel spreadsheet and I've got customers that are paying for something. Right. I'd much rather see that because that tells me you understand your customer, you're taking feedback, and then when you, we give you the capital to build products, you're building something that they actually want. So I think some kind of traction um, and evidence that someone is actually, not someone, that people are willing to pay for whatever it is you're selling is really important as well. 
Thank you so much. I think Lexi, you wanted to add something. Yeah, I mean, it, it goes to that to, to, to both points. One on uh, willingness to learn, and second around the traction part. I mean, I think hugely important is falling in love with the problem and not the product. Because especially when you're an early stage founder, you might not have the product today, but if you are willing to understand what the customer needs and iterate around that and pivot, you know, you may have spent years building something, spent millions of dollars building something, but if something you discover in that process comes up, you might as well scrap all of that and go for the one thing that really will unlock that problem and solve it for your customers. Thank you so much. Um, I also, I wanted to ask you, so, um, when founders get into your program, right, how would you say you accelerate your, their growth? What type of initiatives do you put in place? What type of programming um, do these founders have to go through, right? How do they get out of your program a better company or a better startup? Okay. Um, so, again, I think, I think what everybody has contributed is a precursor to that. Um, for us at FFA, and when, when we think through working with founders and what we think founders can get out of the program, it's dynamic because we have a team. So we built FFA like a startup. We have a team operating across growth, operating across partnerships, operating across engineering, operating across community and content operating across my department, which is sourcing and finding these founders, and also operating our course legal. So we are first the, the reflection of if you please take our feedback, if you please find a way to work with us, you could become a, big, a unicorn, basically. And then how we think of our program, it's, it's flexible. We believe over time, there's been the, the, the model of, you know, bringing startups together and working with them. But we also believe sometimes founders want to maintain the flexibility of choosing when they want to have conversations, of choosing that they, do, they want to have, again, personal ties with people that can help them think through complex problems. So when we engage founders or when we build concepts, we look for like great founders, we understand the traction, we look for a pathway to product market fit. We want to see it. Because at the end, that's the thing that would keep funding this business, the traction. So all this we look through, it's flexible for us. We run, six, we run, we run some sort of a, between a three to four month um, program, but it's flexible. You don't need to be in the office. It's remote. I mean, the pandemic probably accelerated that one. It's remote. But what we believe, it's a core attraction for us, is we have corporate that are not just saying, let's work together. Corporates that are giving us money from their balance sheet. There is no better way they can be incentivized to work with the businesses we build. Because their money is basically what these businesses are kind of launching out from. So there is that core component to work together. It's very important for us that our startups get what we call unfair advantage um, to be able to go into the market and scale. And then what we look out for, I mean, when, we, when we're done with this, there's a spin-off. But we will continue to support these founders because we believe it takes a community to build a scalable product. And in between what, when all this is over, there is still opportunity for feedback. Because we expect to become their customers. We expect them to come back to us and be like, we built this, this has worked. We are trying to go this way. Do you have any advice? So that relationship is very much important as an accelerator and also sometimes as an incubator for us. Uh, thank you so much. Um, Lexi, I wanted to come to you for a bit. So, I mean, the other panelists have said so much about what they look out for in early stage companies, obviously because you are at a much later stage, right? So we've talked about team, product market fits, the size of the market. Um, as these um, founders and as these companies begin to grow, at the later stage in which you then come in, what are you particular about um, in these companies? Well, you know, it's changed a lot in the past six, nine months. Um, before, I would say we were certainly looking at, at top-line growth. Okay. Um, and, 
and you know the unit economics side so your your cocktail tv but we always wanted to see you know i think at a series a stage revenue growth of of 3x per year or or more it's a different conversation now for, for where the market is. The things that we are more obsessed about are showing consistent margin expansion. Okay. So showing that that gross margin is ticking up and it's doing it on a monthly basis. Um, that you are efficient with burn. So the amount of cash that you're actually spending is generating more and more revenue uh, for the amount you're spending. Um, what we also take a, a hard look at, um, and it's easier for consumer-facing products than it is to B2B products, because B2B products are a lot longer sales cycle, but we look at how cohorts have performed, so how your customer base from the very start has performed over time, and how those are improving. And most importantly, we look for consistency in those cohorts. If there's differentiating factors, we want to hear from you the reason for that. It could be, we tried and tested this new customer acquisition tool, didn't really work. Or um, we launched this new product, didn't really pick up. Or maybe the opposite, we, there was this product, everybody started really liking it, we surprised us. But when there's not consistency and you don't have a reason for it, that gives us a lot of concern. Um, I would say we also, besides all the things that everybody else spoke about, we think a lot about exits. So who is actually going to want to acquire your company? It's not really up for you to decide as an entrepreneur, but we, we look at that very closely and we, um, you know, we, when we invest, we plan where the likely exit scenario will come in, in five years or more time. All right, thank you so much. I uh, wanted to quickly mention that um, we do have giveaways um, for participants in today's session, so feel free to share any nuggets from any of the speakers. Feel free to tag um, my side brief on Twitter, and we do have a lottery and be giving out some amazing um, prizes. Um, for um, Oyin, um, what are some of the challenges you've faced, right, running an accelerator program, right? What are, what are some of the things that, I mean, could be better, right? We know it's not all that rosy. We know, yeah, there's money out for the giving. You're investing in startups, right? But, I mean, personally, and maybe unique to the African continent, obviously you've just moved back, right? What are things that you think could be better? Maybe in terms of enabling environments, what are just those challenges that you think would probably be peculiar to the African continent? You gave me a question where I'm just going to complain. Okay. <laughs> I mean... You look at this room, right? You look at the fact that all the tickets were sold right. and people yeah. aren't here because there's not an enabling environment. Right. Um, so, but I'm, I'm, everyone already knows this. They're, it's difficult. They're waiting in some line either to get fuel or cash. Yeah. <laughs> no fuel, no cash, no electricity. Yeah, absolutely. So I, I don't know where you want me to start with that one. <laughs> um, right. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's, yeah, it's, but I think it's reflective of being an entrepreneur. So us being, it's us as it's the first year that we're here. I was a founder previously and I feel like I'm a founder again. Yeah. So I'm constantly telling my team, we are a startup. We're privileged in that we have good funding. <laughs> um, but even that, we're funded in dollars and then, you know, the conversion happens at the central bank rate instead of at the real rate. So, you know, essentially we have half the budget than we should do. But we do have funding, we have a good team, we have the structure of Techstars and the brand of Techstars behind us. Um, but at the same time, just like any startup, we're learning as we go along, we're taking constant feedback from the founders um, to make sure that we are shifting our program as we go along. So it's definitely challenging, but I think in those challenges, it just makes you even stronger. And I think, I, I always say that I think that Nigerian entrepreneurs are the best yeah. entrepreneurs in the world. Um, and I genuinely feel that. I feel that there's something about this environment <laughs> and the challenges of this environment mixed with the respect for education um, and the respect for our elders and therefore the ability to take guidance that just creates the most amazing startup. So it's difficult, but it also kind of makes us a bit special, I think. Thank you so much. So, I mean, very soon we'll be going to the audience. So just in case we have um, questions, to ask any of our panelists, um, please feel free to ask. Um, so 
Um, Kelichi, I will start with you. Application cycles for your justice accelerators, how many times do you take those in a year? What is that typically like? How many um, applications do you typically get? What is the fraction of people that get in? How can founders better their chance of getting in? Okay, so um, interestingly, we are closing out the cycle next week. Uh, we are having our demo day in Nairobi. So um, for Hill, on the accelerator level, we have, the accelerator is a global accelerator. So we have startups from West Africa, from East Africa, and from MENA. Oh, I am participating in the accelerator. And at the end of it, so it started in, I think, June last year, and it's closing out in Feb on February 15th. So at the end of it, we launch a new call for application. So we expect that, I'm hoping and expecting that we have applications, you know, from startups that are looking to solve problems um, in crime, issues around crime, money, tenancy, land, neighbor issues, employment issues, um, gender-based violence as well, whatever the case may be. And um, that runs till March 31st. So we have, um, looking at, we look at the applications, have interviews, I think two, inter two stage interviews, and then um, have those that will get in. So I would say for me, typically, like last year we got um, around 40 to 50 applications from Nigeria, and we had about five, yeah, get in. Um, but I think, speaking to this, one challenge I have, I really want to talk about my challenge, is the fact that I don't know how startups, I think there is an upsell of what accelerators do. There is an upsell, there's a value add. But it's just interesting how we would have people start applications. And it, feel, it looks interesting, but they will not finish their applications. <laughs> so it's just like, I wish you did. And I can't come to you and say, oh, come and finish. Even though I, I follow up and remind, there is just so little I can do. I cannot compel a startup to you know, join us. So just coming back to the question, we have that number coming, and then we run through a six-month um, accelerator program. And at the end of it, there is also a demo day. So interestingly, uh, we do a grant funding of 10,000 euros. So for every startup that comes into our program globally, they receive 10,000 euros. Now, during our demo day, um, where people, where the startups get to pitch to a global audience, we also have funding for the first three. So we have 20K, 10K, and 5K euros that are given to the first, I don't know if I should use the word, first, second, and third startups, you know, that win the, the, the pitch. So that's like how typically the program happens once a year. We also have other programs, the incubation and the ideation program that happens once a year as well. Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, oh yeah, we know Texas is really competitive. You receive hundreds of applications across different countries. So for founders who are looking to apply, right, what are things that would set them out from the rest of the um, people who apply? And how many times a year? What is the application process like? Um, yeah. Sure. Um, so applications for our 2023 program will open in April. Um, we'll be screening and interviewing and the program will start in November. Um, I've said the four main things we look for, team, market, product, and traction. And by far the, the, the most important one is team. I mean, we had a couple of companies where we weren't super excited by the product, but the teams made it worth investing in, so really focus on team. And I would say, kind of aligned to you know, the fact that people don't finish applications, my, my top tip if, is if you're applying is just make, think of everything you can do to make it difficult for someone to say no. Just how do you make their life as easy as possible? That means for your deck, follow the standard format. Google how to do a pitch deck, and I'll tell you, you'll find so many links that say, 10 pages, focus, start with your problem, go to your solution, go to market sizing. It will tell you the framework to use. Follow the framework. Don't go off script. Just make it super easy because if I'm going through, I mean, if a member of the team is going through 100 pitch decks, they're doing this next. So just make it really easy. Use your social media. Like when I Google your company, I want to see that you are active, and I don't mean active saying you're boss babe and all, the, I mean like active in thought leadership pieces relevant to your sector. So that just shows that you're dedicated to the problem 
and you've got some insights that have come fr that only come from speaking to customer and understanding your customers. If you've met someone at an event, um, if you've met me at an event, follow up your application with a meaningful email, not, hi, I'm looking for investment. I get so many emails saying, I'm doing this, I'm looking for $1 million. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> Honestly, my LinkedIn is full of it. All right. That's not, don't, that doesn't make it easy. If you tell me something thought, thoughtful, um, insightful, if, for example, you came to me and said, hey, I saw that you invested in this company and they do X, Y, and Z, did you know that this is also happening in the sector? Or, you know, if you, if you tell me something that I don't know, I love it. I think some of the most exciting screening committee meet, meetings I had was when the startup founder knew their customers so well that they were teaching me things and teaching the rest of us things. And I was just like, that's awesome. Like, that gets me excited. So make it easy for the investor. Follow the framework. Follow up with meaningful insights. Um, and good luck. Thank you so much. Ayo, do you have any pointers for some of these founders who might be looking to apply into FFA? Yeah, um, I think for me, the first thing is customer obsession. I think she's, she, it's put on, like, know your customer so well that it feels like you are the customer and then your product is solving a problem you go through every day. Know that customer base so well. Um, for us, right, what makes us a bit different and dynamic is we are on the hunt for founders. We literally are looking for founders. So we have the kind of circle where we are pitching founders, we are engaging with founders to see um, and let them know how dynamic they are in this space of like stuff. So why we do the website applications? Okay. Because it's a rolling basis. We engage founders. We do LinkedIn emails. Right. Like, oh, we think what you're doing is amazing. We see an opportunity for you to work with this corporate. We see an opportunity for you to scale if you could give us the opportunity to, again, um, work with you on this. Um, and also we've morphed our model prior to now. What made us a bit dynamic too was the fact that we used to charge for services. But we also thought through and discovered that while that's been great, to also make sure like it's a um, value base for both people, it's a bit restrictive for some founders because some founders believe we just want capital. If you want to help us, help us. And then that's the power we've gone to. At the turn of the new year, it's we have money to give. We are exploring other attractive venture opportunities to even include um, non-dilutive capital, which okay. is, I mean, popularly called grants. Uh, we are just thinking through how can we help African founders accelerate. So again, we are happy to engage with you. I'm also happy to come and eat on you if you're a founder, and I believe you have been something amazing. Right. And then it's all through the air. There is no court time. There is no you know, space or whatnot is all through the year. Let's keep talking. Absolutely. So we've heard from FFA applications are on a rolling basis. For HEAL, it's sometimes in next week that the applications close. Um, for Techstars, applications for 2023 will be opening in April. So let's keep tap. So I wanted to check with the audience to see if there is anyone with any question. We have just about six more minutes. Okay, so let's start with the lady in the room, and then hopefully we're able to get to everybody else. No, we cannot. Huh? No Still working? Okay. Um, hi, thank you all for everything that you said. Um, it's very interesting to hear this different dynamics to the accelerator programs that you all run. So it'd be interesting to learn what does success look like for the startups that come out of these accelerators from each of your programs? So what, what, what are you looking, what would I say? And I'm not talking about a unicorn, <laughs> you know, like I'm not talking about a unicorn startups. Like you do, you're more focused on impact, right? So what does that look like for you? What does that look like for Techstars, for Founders Factory Africa? I would love to learn that. So you want to go first? Okay. Okay, cool. So for us, we know it's early. Lots of businesses will die. What's in it for us is to build the resilience with the founder. So we have 54 companies. 
some businesses are not doing great, but the founders are persisting. So that's what we see, and that's what we, again, sometimes believe it's a core, like a core, um, this thing for us, a core traction for us is like, let's build, great, let's go, not so great, let's keep going. So that's, that's important for us. But at the end, the top of it is to be able to identify if it's just a 10% percentile, that is amazing, and then we can eat a home run with it. Exit, IPOs, anything. But I mean, the other 90, just let's keep working. If he dies, we would find a way. All right, does anyone else want to take a shot at that question? Sure, okay. just a, was a question about what does success look like for the startup when they've come out? Or what does this success look like for tech stars? How do I define? So, I mean, we're an investor first and foremost. So there is, an, um, there is a measure of IRR and you know, internal rate of return. So essentially some, some metric that which, which aligns to their growth, which they usually use valuation off the back of that. So really it's based on how much money you can fundraise. So that's, that's what an investor will always look at. You know, have they made their money and have they made their return? Aside from that, for me, it's, I want every founder that we've gone through, when I say to them, do you feel like you've accelerated your business fourfold in the short three months? I want them to say yes. If they say no, I think that we failed as tech stars. Um, because it's hard. Like they're running their own business. A lot of them have families. We have two companies from Kenya. They've left their families, left their children to come and be here. They're in an accelerator program for several hours a day whilst trying to actually work on the business. It's hard. So if they don't come out and saying, say that the capital was the, the least valuable thing that I got from this, and actually what I really got was the network and the program, then I think that we haven't done the job that we should have done. So yeah, that's, that's really how I'm going to be measuring success. So you guys, I'm hoping that. Thank you so much. <laughs> I'd really like that. to go to the next question. And let's see, we've taken, let me take him. Hi, so basically my question is for startups that don't have revenue, what would be the thing that would be like really exciting for you to make you feel like, oh, this guy's on something? Especially like if it's like, um, you know, like something deep tech that's in stealth, you don't want to like hit the markets really quickly. So what would you see that would be like, oh, you don't have revenue, but yeah, I would still take you guys. Okay, so I mean, I think the panelists have mentioned a couple of things, like the team, the size of the market, those are interesting. Um, even without traction, um, what yeah, do you there, think? there's other traction metrics you can show besides revenue. Okay. You can show how active users are, even if they're free users. Um, you can show retention of those customers. You could show certain demographics about those customers that show that they would be willing to pay for a product when you turn that on. All right. So I think we'll take one last question. Okay. Hi, couple panels so far. Yeah, so I have this question for right. So um we an accelerator. Yeah. So if you are looking at two businesses, the first one the first one is profitable, right? You can see their sell sheets and everything. Second one, um they're not profitable, yeah, but you can see that there's potential to grow have a high valuation. For example, like, let's check now, Uber is still not profitable. So if your accelerator, you have the chance to be able to like model, like a model into the future, determine that company A is going to be like, right? It may not make profit, but a lot of billions in have a company B, that they are making profit, they're going to grow, maybe not as much as Uber, yeah, but they're going to make profit. You have to you can only pick one. What would you pick and why? Okay. And have you, so. and have you ever had a profitable company? <laughs> I did not ask about profits to any of the startups that we screened. Okay. I hope that answers your question. Didn't ask. I don't know what that... No, I, I do now. But at the time, I didn't make the decision based on any profit metric, nor did I know the answer to that question. It's not... It, it, it's for my pre-seed, 
So some of them will be profitable, sure. Some of them will be making revenue, sure. Some of them won't be making revenue at all, and that's absolutely fine. It's all about the trajectory. Are they able to demonstrate that they're doing this and that with our help, they can do that? Um, so yeah, profit doesn't really come into the decision. All right, I know we do have other questions, but I would say, I mean, feel free to engage with the panelists. Feel free to network with them. Our time is up. Thanks so much for, I mean, coming out, for sticking through to the end. To our online audience, also, thanks, thanks so much for being with us, and we really appreciate it. So again, I'll just give a brief side brief. We provide a simple platform for entrepreneurs to launch, to manage, and scale their business across markets. So from business registration to banking and to regulatory compliance, we provide a one-stop solution for founders across the continent. So feel free to check us out at sidebrief.com. Thank you so much, guys, again, for coming. Thanks for sticking around. And thanks to my amazing panelists. Thanks, Lexi. I know I cold DM'd you <laughs> on LinkedIn. Thanks, Ayo. I also did the same. I know Oyin and Kelechi more personally. Thank you guys for um, coming through. Thanks, Thanks so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>